Hi, I'm Jim McBitty of the Stanford Nanofabrication Facility here at Stanford University. This is a part three of a four-part lecture series on dry etching. In this uh, presentation, I'm going to cover dry etching mechanisms. Previously, I, the first lecture was on the introduction to dry etching. The second was on the basic of plasma and the types of dry etch tools. And the next lecture after this one will be on choosing a dry etching pr a processing tool. In this presentation, I'm going to cover the following areas. First, physical sputtering. Next, pure chemical etching, followed by ion-enhanced chemical etching, and then ion-enhanced inhibitor etching. I'm then going to talk about X configuration and X mechanism comparisons. And finally, and some non-ideal pattern transfer issues in dry etching. So let's get going. Okay, X mechanism. I'm going to start with physical sputtering, which is, uh, I think, it, well, it, it, I'm knocking atoms off a surface, or uh, can be thought of a, a atomic sandblasting. The diagram here shows an ion coming in and material coming off the surface. Now, we use, uh, the sputtering tools, I want to say, use uh, typically use argon, but any ion can cause sputtering. Argon tends to be, we tend to uh, like argon because it has no chemistry and all that, and we tend to get a, for the same power conditions, we get higher ion fluxes with argon and other things. Physical sputtering tends to be used for anisotropic uh, 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 etching, but it has an issues of damage, low selectivity, redeposition. And we use, we typically use physical sputtering when there's no volatile byproducts. So we, we can't, we prefer using chemistry because chemistry gives it, uh, I'll go along and show you, gives it a lot of advantages in terms of rate and profile control. But sometimes you say, no, it can't, there's no, there's no byproduct comes off the surface, so it has to be all physical. So I want to show you some typical rates of uh, for sputtering. So here's a case of, uh, so rates depend on ion current, energy, and the material. And so I'm going to show you a case of a uh, of 500 eV argon at one milliamp per square centimeter. And one milliamp per square centimeter corresponds to 10 to 15 ions per, per centimeter square per second. So here I have a list of materials and uh, x ray sputter rates. The first thing we see is that the numbers are relatively low in terms of rates. They're all in nanometers uh, per minute. Second thing I want to show is that when you talk about the comparison of a metal, metal array of metal versus metal oxides, uh, you tend to have big differences. Metal, metal oxides are much lower. In, in the case of uh, aluminum, the, uh, the ratio between the, uh, the oxide and the uh, uh, aluminum is uh, you know, all of 10 to 1. So aluminum is about 10 times faster than the oxide. The other point that we look at here is uh, the low selectivity. That they are, for the most part, they're not that different. Uh, uh, silicon and silicon oxide filter rate are not that much different from polar resist. Okay, let's go on here. And talk about next case is a pure chemical etching, and here where we have react uh, radicals who are reacting spontaneously with surface atoms, and the typical case that we, we use a lot is uh, is uh, fluorine CF4 from fluorine, basically uh, uh, etching uh, silicon. So silicon with fluorine. So silicon uh, uh, well fluorine will spontaneously act with silicon, and so you don't need any ion bombardment with this. And this process, so we're basically getting a neutral coming down and forming a byproduct. Uh, we typically use it with free fluorine for silicon etching and free uh, oxygen for polymer etching. It tends to show strong temperature and loading uh, dependence. By this, I mean is as you increase, uh, the rate increases uh, significantly with temperature, typically a, a, a activation energy about 1 eV and the rates decrease with increased exposed area. So it basically, as your larger area, uh, your radical uh, uh, density uh, has to be used, you know, the source of radicals has to be used over a larger area, so the rate goes down. 
They tend to be isotropic. You get, uh, you get good selectivities. They tend to be a lot faster in the etching uh, than sputtering. Uh, but the, a lot of times we need something more than uh, isotropic. So that's where the, some of the neck mechanisms will come into play. Oh, and uh, the characteristic of, of the pure uh, etching is a stop by any surface deposition or any uh, formation of non-volatile products. So you say if you have a, a contaminate in the in material etching and that contaminate can build up to the surface and finally stop the etching. Here's an example of uh, near pure chemical etching where this was done on our, our LAM ICP etcher using SF6 and chlorine, but it, it was set up to be a very uh, isotropic etching. So we see here that the X rate, lateral X rate, is almost equal to the vertical X rate. So we have a uh, the ratio here, uh, almost one. Okay, now I'm going to call the next two. Uh, Mechanism, I'm, I'm, I'm calling mix mechanism, uh, mixed mechanism. And one, the first one is going to be the ion enhanced chemical etching, and then I'm going to talk about inhibitor or, or deposition controlled etching. So here I show that I have a nuchal coming in, the ions coming down, activate. I've talked about the, in some of the earlier lectures. So the ion activates or gets the process going, and then we form the volatile byproduct coming off. Radicals, so we basically talk about radicals going down to the surface, but the rack can be blocked. Maybe but it can't, it can't uh, break, it. let's say, a silicon uh, and chlorine. The, silicon, uh, the fluor, uh, chlorine cannot break the silicon-silicon bond, so you stop. Or it can be a deposition going on. Uh, so the ions uh, break uh, the reaction blocking bonds and, or, uh, and help the byproduct get off the surface. And so here I'm saying chlorine, uh, silicon with chlorine, and the ion coming in, basically forming a silicon uh, dichloride or a silicon tetrachloride coming off the surface. The process tends to be less dependent on, uh, on temperature, uh, less loading dependent, uh, and less dependent on surface oxides uh, than the pure chemical case. And you can get good selectivity, good anisotropic, but it has it is subject to some secondary effect, and I'll show that later on. Okay, second a mix mechanism is a case of ion enhanced inhibitor action. And this is where we have simultaneous deposition and action going on at the same time. The diagram here I'm showing here I have ion coming in, I have a neutral coming down, uh, and I, I'm showing here a little inhibitor layer here. Uh, where the ion is coming in, a breaking through the inhibitor layer, allowing uh, the radical to come down and uh, react with uh, the material we want to etch, and then the volatile product coming off. So typically, uh, what we do, we're, uh, let's say in fluorine chemistry or something, we're a we add another ga uh, gas element to enhance, promote deposition, and that can be hydrogen, it can be uh, a carbon fluoride, uh, CHF3, O2, nitrogen, uh, and a boron trichloride can help us. We, I'll, talk, we, I'll tell you a number of cases where boron uh, trichloride is helpful in the etching. So we use, so basically use local deposition to block or slow etching. And then we use ion bombardment to remove the deposition on the horizontal surfaces. Uh, temperature, the process tends to show temperature and loading dependencies. Not as bad as a pure chemical case, but the typical is a, a, a chemical depend, uh, temperature dependence. Uh, you can get good selectivity, good anisotropy. Uh, and the process is, is somewhat tunable uh, by how much deposition we put in. And here in this little diagram, I'm showing a case where we have uh, a low, uh, so we, we basically have a low amount of deposition, so we're not quite isotropic, but we still have a, a certain amount of undercut. As we increase the deposition, we can go from this case to almost pure anisotropic, and if we keep on increasing deposition, then we can get in slope walls. And, you know, uh, sometimes we want to look walls, but a lot of times we want the anisotropic behavior. 
And here's your show some SEMs of a case of silicon etching using uh, HBR, uh, so it's a bromine, uh, NF3 chlor uh, fluorine oxygen combination. Uh, and we had an oxide mask, and this was done in our uh, P5000 uh, uh, etching tool. And we show here ag axed. You see the wall closer, but if we actually, we, we, so we basically, in this process, we actually form the oxide. So we go in and with a, a, a 51 H up dip, it removes this uh, oxide uh, like material on the side. And so here is down to the, the mask material. And you see we have a fairly anisotropic. And this, this process actually, we can get fairly, uh, if we tune it right, we can get an almost vertical sidewall, very, very anisotropic behavior. But it's a combination of uh, you know, fluorine uh, uh, and uh, uh, bromine chemistry with oxide formation. And the oxide formation between, we have oxygen reacting with the silicon com uh, coming off to form the uh, uh, ox uh, silicon dioxide-like material on the sidewall. So here I want to show uh, uh, mechanism, X mechanisms and system compar uh, configuration comparison. So here I'm talking about, uh, we have physical processes versus chemical processes. So at lower pressures, uh, oh, At higher pressures, we tend to show much more chemical processes, uh, uh, higher energy, if much more physical processes. The chemical processes give a better selectivity. The physical process, you know, as we go more to ion-driven uh, processes, we get the anisotropic uh, behavior. And so here's the act mixing of sputtering on the more physical and pure chemical, and then the mixed region where we have a lot of control. This is where we like to operate with the chemistry and the ion bombardment to give a control and what we uh, selectivity, high selectivity, uh, good profile control. And here I show uh, the different configurations. So I'm saying downstream etching is mainly for chemical process. No, there's no ion bombardment at all. And ICP, uh, well, ICP allows us to give a very broad range. We can go in and tune the amount of ion energy, and we can run, ICP can actually run from low pressure down to a few millitor all the way up to 100 millitor. And then in between, we have the CCP modes, the plasma and the RIE, where the plasma mode tends to be lower ion energies, where the RIE mode tends to be the higher ion energies. Okay, let me... Continue here. So now I want to talk about some of the non-ideal uh, 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 pattern cramper issues. First of all, we talked about bit before it's undercutting, depending on how much sidewall or iron driven process you have here. Another one I hadn't talked about before is noxing. Noxing can be due to the case of uh, charging. When we can, uh, we can get charging at the, let's say we're coming down and we have an oxide layer, and we start getting charging on this oxide layer, that charging can uh, allow for ions to be deflected from the surface and uh, erode through sidewall polymer and cause a notch at the bottom corner. And here we call micro uh, trenching, and this is where the iron come off. If you have a slope wall, you can get iron reflection at the wall. We always get some of it. If we had no uh, iron reflection, we always have rounded corners. So if you have a nice sharp corner, you're depending on having some iron reflection off the walls. But if you have too much of it, you can dig a hole right near the wall. And call that called micro crunching. Bowing had to do with the directionality of the ion bombardment. If we run at too low a pressure or not enough deposit sidewall depth, we can get bowing. Next problem is what we call aspect uh, racial dependent etching. And basically, that we get higher X rates in wider openings. And typically, it had to do with the chemistry had a harder time getting in the structure. Ions tend to very directional, can go very, can get into very small structures and not be inhibited too much. But the chemistry, we need to get, we always need that radical chemistry and some deposition chemistry. That is limited by the opening, and so small structures tend to act uh, slower. Next, we have facet formation. This is mainly a form, uh, problem with, uh, where you get very. Uh, uh, we have a, a large comp a sputtering component. 
A sputtering tends to be has an optimal angle, and any time you have a sputtering component, you can get uh, there's an optimal angle that sputtering is, uh, is highest at the angle uh, uh, at a, a, a fa uh, forming a facet. So. Uh, so you have to be careful if you go too uh, too heavy in the ion bombardment. You have to be very careful of f facet formation. What can happen? The facet can move in all the way in, and that can then affect your profile. If the facet goes all the way, uh, uh, keep moving this direction, it will expose the edge and then lead to a, a sloped profile. Uh, damage issue: you have oh, what, plasma charging. They have normally associated with non-uniform plasmas. And then ion damage. Anytime you have ions in the surface, uh, they will uh, displace, uh, cause some uh, 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 atom displacement. And typically, what we want to do, is, uh, if you're really sensitive to ion uh, damage, one, we might end up the etching process with a uh, with a chemical uh, a non-ion bombardment, a chemical. Uh, uh, etching to remove the damage, or maybe do a, a, a slight wet dip, a, a, a wet etch dip to just remove a couple uh, mono layers. The damage, the damage tends to be down, you know, ten from deep, not very far down. And lastly, uh, we have mixed uh, uh, prosthetic mixing effects, and this can to do if one, if you have one prosthetic and follow another, we can have interactions. So one of the things we, we talk about now, actually, we're all having byproducts coming off the surface. Well, some of the byproducts can end up on the walls of the chamber, and they can affect subsequent chemistry. Remember, we have a, a plasma extra is a chemical reactor, and the wafer is just one surface in your reactor. You have a lot of walls, and the wall, any chemistry recombination that occurs at the wall affects your radical concentrations, and even plasma density. So you want to all have uh, the walls to be in equilibrium. So this is why we do plasma uh, cleaning after or before a process and conditioning. Conditioning is all about getting the wall chemistry to be equilibrium with that chemistry so we get the same concentration get the wafer. So we want the, the whole chemical reactor to be the same configuration, same surface chemistry each and every time. Okay, so a summary. Ion energy and radical chemistry determine X mechanisms at the surface. Ion only leaves butter etching uh, if the ion energy is high enough. Radicals only lead to isotropic etching uh, if you have volatile products. Dry etching is often, often a combination of both uh, uh, more than one surface process can be you know, ion driven and deposition combinations. Uh, in the next video, video uh, presentation, I'll talk about choosing a dry X process and tool. Thank you.